Hey guys, it's Gabe here from Fly on the Line. Today we are going to be tying a Comparadon. Um, now this fly, I've heard from many fly fishers that it works very well in fly tires. Um, and that a lot of people love this fly. Um, I personally love tying it. I have not yet to use it, but I have heard very, very good things about it. So, what we're going to do... To, for this fly is we're going to be using a size 12 hook. I'm at a size 14 and size 14s with this flat eye. Um, but I recommend a range for comparadons from anywhere from 16 to 12 size hooks, dry fly hooks. Um, so yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out our thread at our eye. And I'm using a rust done. It's I'll show you the I'll show you later. I'll show you guys later. I'm using a rust done. And this is a very I like this color. It, I've used it for many flies just because it looks good. Okay. Now that we've gotten there, I'm gonna wrap to about like give it a long loop long wrap about to the halfway point and I'm gonna grab some nice deer hair now when you're searching for a deer hair for comparadons what you want to do is you want to find some that's long like this and and fine I love this deer hair <laughs> this is my favorite clump of deer this is my favorite patch of deer hair that we have I have my fly tying box my fly material box um, and when you cut hair for comparatives, you want it super long. So see how, for here, this is before we learn comparatives, and then you can kind of tell, this is where we learn comparatives, because we, we want to get down to the littlest point. And I'm kind of close to my end on my deer hair, here. I'm going to have to go to a different patch, which kind of stinks because I really love this stuff, but... Who cares? Um, so we're gonna grab a couple hairs, a couple deer hair fiber, deer hairs, not that many. You're gonna grab, you're gonna grab them and take your scissors and you're gonna clip them off. You're gonna get rid of all that excess hair and fuzz. You're gonna grab your deer hair stacker, well, or just your your regular stacker. There's not really a deer hair stacker. Okay. You're going to stack those hairs. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull them out. Those are stacked pretty evenly. I like the way they stacked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm gonna just going to clip it. So it's nice and even, like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up so it gives it a nice tail, like that. And so what you're going to do is you're going to, with this, you're going to want to build up your body. So you're going to want to trim and make sure it's up about to the eye. So you're going to wrap down the center and keep doing loose wraps so it stays like this. go. So I'm going to kind of lay down some tighter wraps towards the back, but not too tight. You want them just enough so they kind of splay out, but not too much. Like that. That's a good deer hair tail. It's a good compare it tail. I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to kind of trim out some of these excess hairs. That I didn't get when I was kept wrapping. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our wing. This is going to be made out of the same deer hair I just used. And we're going to wrap it about a couple of lengths before the eye. Maybe even a little bit further back. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little bit 
like twice the size of the clump of the last deer hair clump we used. So about like that big. Maybe even more. So like that. Pinch it. Take our scissors. And snip it out. And then clean out all those excess hair fibers. And actually, there's a cool tool I have. I don't have it with me right now. Maybe my dad's flat tying inside the house so I can do the video. But, um, is a, you can get like a mustache comb or like a small comb and you can comb out all those excess fibers, which is really, it ends up really evenly. And I really like that because it gets all the fiber, all those extra little fuzz bits and whatever. So you're going to get your deer hair inside that stacker. And you're going to stack it. Okay. There we go. It doesn't have to be too evenly. If it's a little uneven, it's okay. Just get rid of all that extra fuzz. There's still more. I wish I had that mustache come. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna trim it so it's about even. Like that. Nice even hairs. I'm gonna flip your deer hair around. We're gonna line it up. You want a wing about that big. So that's about a little past the eye and right where the thread stops. And that gives you a nice wing. So you're going to put down some loose wraps. And then pull tight. You're going to lay down some heavy, some good, so not too heavy, but just enough to kind of give it a bump. Some heavy wraps. You're going to take your scissors. Snip that out of there. It's still a couple hairs left over. And so there's a nice little clump. I'm just going to kind of wrap that down. I still got some fuzz. I didn't, because I didn't have a little comb, I didn't get as much as I could out. So, I'm trying to get a little bit more out. If I can't get it all out, I'll just get it out. You can get it out later. Okay. All we're going to do is we're going to pull. We're going to kind of straighten the deer hair out. And so we're going to pull it back. And kind of lay a couple wraps up close. This will kind of hold the deer hair up. So it's in a, you want it in like that. I'll show you guys. So it looks kind of like that. Except I'm going to adjust it. So you're looking at the deer hair. I'm going to adjust it so it is like a fan. A 180 degree fan. It's not supposed to be at the bottom. But you want to adjust it so it's evenly spread. And like that. And if it's leaning forward too much, just lay down a couple wraps. And then just to kind of adjust it. Okay. Now we're ready to add our dubbing. So we're going to wrap all the way back to just before, just our tail. Okay. And we're going to grab some dubbing. Now the dubbing I'm going to be using is... A light tan. This is the color. It's tan, but it doesn't really look tan. It looks actually like pale, but it's like a super light tan. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to. I don't have any wax at the moment, but I can just. I can still put it on, put the dubbing on by just licking the line. And I put a little too much on. 
but this will just help to build the, bo the body quicker. So, I'm going to kind of lay down to a couple wraps, and the, the reason you want the hump is because then it helps you kind of build up the body, which is kind of nice. And if you ever want to, like, help build your taper, you can lay down, you can just lay down some, like, super tight wraps, and it'll, like, kind of, like, fall into the dubbing. And we got a little bit more. You don't want too much. And you're gonna, gonna help build, continue to build that nice taper. Adding Oops. Let's fix it, a fixable mistake. So when, once you sort of get to the back, you caught try not try your best not to capture any deer hair fibers. It's kind of hard. Oh, come on. There we go. That's a nice, good taper. Now we're going to wrap just to the front of the wing. After, sometimes after wrapping, sometimes your deer hair fibers can get, and that little fan can get uneven. Ooh, I got to Gray butt hair in here. Butt end. Ah, I'll get it later. Butt end hair. Um, I think you're gonna lick your fingers. Some more dubbing on your line. And you're going to kind of continue taper to that taper, except you're going to build up the biggest part of the taper at the end of, at the start of the, at the end of the wing, the front of the wing. And then you'll shrink it down as closer you get to your eye, the eye of your hook. And you're going to want to leave some a spot in front of your eye. To do your whip finish. I did a little bit too big of a taper. No, my wing kind of came back because I wrapped so close to my eye. But I can just adjust that. Pull it forward like that. Okay. Now we're gonna grab our whip finisher. Do a couple wraps. Doesn't really matter. So, I'll snip that. Next, I've come up, my, my dad came up with a thing he saw in a different video. This is really handy. It's my Sally Hansen applicator. It's just a fine tip applicator, I'll show you. And this is so you can get, like, in those super fine nooks and crannies. And so, that just kind of helps you so it doesn't, the Sally Hansen doesn't spread anywhere else. See, it lays just a nice, even drop down. I can even put it, if I really wanted to, up in front of the eye. And that just kind of strengths it up in front of the end. And then just like your bodkin, you'd want to wipe that off. Like that. And then you'll notice some, some of these come with a 
cleaner and see how it's kind of sticking out. That you're gonna wanna put. You wanna get it lined up with your the hole, and, you, and it's gonna slide in. There you go. Ugh, okay. So that, my friends, is how to tie the Comparadon. This is I. I really like this fly. This is this is kind of how kind of how it looks. And it looks like that from the front. I'm gonna adjust the wing a little bit. Pull out some of that fuzz. That's kind of how it looks from the front. That's how it looks from the back. And this is how it kind of looks from the bottom, like that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, and please have a great day. And also check out my blog, flyinthelineblog.wordpress.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please have a great day.